This video is brought to you by Sporlin. Quality, integrity, and tradition. The inside of this fan is, is totally coming apart internally. Look up here, the whole thing's coming apart. I wanna start this video off by explaining a few things. First off, a disclaimer. Um, I'm going to show me uh, signaling a crane in this video. I am not an expert, okay? Um, there is some strict requirements that you technically have to follow. OSHA guidelines want you to know proper hand signals. But what I find is that every crane operator uses different hand signals, okay? That may be right, that may be wrong. But that's just how we roll in my area. Depending on the crane operator, they like to use different hand signals, okay? There's a couple, you know, you, you always want to know how to do things correctly. But, you know, you just, you, you got to know that the crane needs to understand what you're telling him to do. Verbal commands to a crane are kind of useless because he can barely hear you, let alone see you, okay? Um, of course, you know, in a perfect world, you've got a proper signaling person, all that good stuff. Sometimes I've even had crane operators come up onto the roof and remotely control their stuff, which is really weird to me. But anyways, i um, going to go over a couple basic hand signals. Again, these are the most common ones that my crane, uh, my mobile cranes use. Okay. Really simple. Most of my mobile cranes, when you want to stop, they want a closed fist. Okay. Now, if you look at the proper OSHA things to do an emergency stop, you wave your hands in front of you to do just a stop. You do one hand. Okay. Um, I tend to use this one as the stop and then this one as the all done or emergency stop. Okay. Um, but that's just because that's what my crane operators usually want. My crane operators usually want this to be their stop. Okay. If I want the crane to travel in a, a left or right or move the boom left to right, usually you just give them a hand signal left, hand signal right. It's always best, I find, to, to motion when you're moving, so that way they know that you want them to continue moving. Um, it's always best, too, in my opinion, to always keep eyesight with the crane operator and make sure that he can see you or at least he knows if you're going to step out of eyesight. Technically, if he can't see you, he's supposed to stop. Again, you guys... I am not a certified trainer for crane operating, hand signals, all that fancy stuff. You need to take a proper training class for that, okay? Um, the next signals is hoist up, okay? And obviously, you want to exaggerate your hand signals as much as possible. Hoist down, same direction, okay? Uh, very important one is boom down, okay? So this is you want him to lower the boom, Okay, but understand when he lowers the boom, it's going to move the load. So with that being said, if you want the load to stay in a set position somewhat, okay, it's not always perfect, you can have him raise or hoist the load while he's lowering the boom. And simply, you show him to lower the boom and you open and close your fingers. And what that means is, is that as he's lowering the boom, he's going to lift the load up because obviously he's got a load hoisted by the boom, right? There's a cable coming down. And as he's lowering the boom, the load's going to drop too. Okay. But let's just say that we need to lower the boom and, and, you know, cause we need the whole load to move. So if I used this hand signal right here, then what he would do is he would lower the boom and raise the load. So that way the load doesn't hit the roof or something like that. Okay. Um, on the flip side, let's say that we want him to raise the boom and Lower the load, okay? Move your hand like this. Simple as that. Or if you just want him to raise the boom. But again, understand that if he raises the boom and he's got a load there, as he raises it, that load is going to move with the boom, okay? So that's where this would come in handy. If you want him to raise the boom but keep the load at a certain, you know, or, or basically lower the load or whatever. Um let me see. I have like a list of here because as I show this, you guys are going to see me using these hand, well, kind of see me using these hand signals. Um, that's pretty much it. Okay. Um, I'm going to try to overlay some hand signals as I'm using them during the video. Again, this is not like a super detailed one. This is one that I just threw together. The last thing I'm going to say is when I'm all done with a crane, okay, 
I will usually, again, make eye contact with the crane operator, make a noise so that way he realizes I'm, I'm, you know, trying to signal him or tell him something. Um, and when I'm all finished, I'm going to look at him. I'm going to give him a thumbs up. Okay. As he's usually low lifting the load, or maybe he's got it suspended or something like that. I'll usually give him a thumbs up and then say, all done thumbs up. You know, usually he'll understand like, Hey, okay, this is, we're done. Right. I usually don't ever, um, walk away until he's got the load or the whatever he's lifting off of my roof. I usually like the load to be away from the roof and make sure that he can see everything. Um, we usually have someone down on the ground that's going to receive it. Um, you guys will see what I'm talking about. And again, you need to understand you need to go to a proper crane safety class to understand uh, the proper hand signals, how to properly rig things, um, you know, don't just trust what I say in a stupid YouTube video because I am in no way certified to train anybody on how to operate or give hand signals to a crane. Okay. Um, all right. Now that I've wasted a couple minutes of your life on with the video. All right. We got an early morning. We're going to change this guy out. We've got a new fan. So, uh, should be a pretty easy swap out. No big deal. We've got a crane coming to make life even easier. So we're going to start by hoisting the load up and lifting it off the ground. Now he's kind of controlling the load right here and he's traveling it over me. I'm gonna go ahead and step because I'm on the opposite side and he can't see me. Technically he's supposed to stop when he can't see me, but you know, and life's not perfect. So I'm gonna step up here right now. And then now I've got a better idea of where I want the load to go. Okay, I'm having him make the boom travel in this instance to my left. And now he's going to hoist the load down. Once I get the load a little bit lower on the roof line, then I have an idea where I need to have him move it. All stop. And now I'm going to have him lay the boom down. I want the load to travel with the boom, so I'm not having him hoist it up. He's just dropping the boom. Now I'm going to have him hoist down and we're going to set down the fan onto the roof. I give him a hand signal, let him know I'm going to step away for a minute. I'll stop. In a perfect world, I have multiple people on the roof to help me. On this job, I had one guy on the ground, and it was an easy enough lift that I could handle it by myself. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, rig the new fan up or, you know, take the straps out of the new fan, put them onto the old fan and rig it up and get it ready to uh, lift all by myself. But, you know, you always want to be careful and make sure that you don't um, get yourself into a position that you're going to get hurt or anything like that. Like I said, this one was fairly easy, so I can kind of handle this myself. A uh, really important thing right here, too, is we are using straps. Um, these straps are, are very heavy duty, so you can literally lift this entire fan with just one end of one strap. But in this situation, just to make it a little bit easier, I went ahead and used it, you know, and, and you'll, you'll see the way that I, I lift this fan. So I have four points of contact on the hook. But you got to make sure, uh, number one, that the straps are the exact same length and that you have them placed evenly on the fan so that way when it lifts up, it doesn't lift up in a weird angle or different direction. This goes for anything that you lift. And I've had crane operators give me straps and like, you know, two of them are longer than the other ones. And it's like, hey, bro, you know, I need four straps that or you know, I'm sorry, two straps that are identical. Or if you're dealing with a big load, four straps that are identical. It's very important to make sure that the heat gives you the exact same length because you don't want to lift something unsafe.
Okay, at this point, I'm gonna have him lay the boom down while lifting or hoisting the load because I'm trying to travel the hook forward. So as he lays it down, I don't want the hook to hit the ground. Now he went a little bit high, but I'll stop. And then now we're gonna hoist the load down. Again, all stop. And then we're gonna go ahead and travel the load, in my case, to my right. And then we give him the all stop. And then at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and hook it up. And because everything I set it up and they were all the same length as it was, this should be an easy lift. But I had to make sure that I centered the hook or the ball directly over my fan. That way it's not lifting at an angle and potentially damaging something. Um, and also you gotta make sure that when your straps lift, they're not gonna grab onto conduits. All right, we're gonna go ahead and hoist the load up now, nice and slow. Once I see that I have a nice, clear, even lift, then I'm happy. And once he sees the load, I make sure that he can see it. Then I give him, I get his attention, give him a thumbs up, the stop, tell him we're good to go but I have to make sure that the load is off of the roof. Notice how I'm gonna stand here and watch it because I wanna see that load and he can still see me, but I wanna make sure that load is completely off the roof. All right, we got our new fan, the crane's out of here. We're just gonna set this guy on there and then we got some work to do. Conduit, hinge and all that good stuff. So we'll get to it. All right, so this fan is not really heavy. It was just big, so that's why we used a crane just to be safe. Um, I'm going to set it on there. It's going to be big for the curb. See how I want to position it. That looks... Um, I'm trying to think if that's going to be a good idea because it has to be able to hinge, so. I think that'll work. I'm trying to like predict what it's gonna do when the hinge hinges, so I think I got it figured out. This little Milwaukee bandsaw kicks ass. All right, so we've got all the wire we need. I just kind of measure. We're going to fish the wire through the conduit, which shouldn't be hard. So what I do is I tape the end of it, so that way it fishes through real easy. Sometimes I get lucky and it'll push through. Sometimes I might have to disconnect the conduit. Yeah, it doesn't want to push through. There it goes. We're good. Plenty of wire. So, okay. I'm just kind of getting an idea what we need to do here. Yeah, this looks easy. We're just gonna do uh, these fork connectors. You know, one thing, I need to learn proper terms. I have my own name for all this stuff. I call these fork connectors. Nice and snug. Always pull on them after, make sure they're nice and tight. There's no power hooked up. It's turned off. Locked out. Nice and snug. And then I always take my receptacles and or switches so that way you can pull them out while they're live next time. And you don't have to worry about them getting shorted out. It's one of those things, think about the next guy. We're going to leave that pulled out because we want to be able to, oh, actually no, we can test current draw down here. So nope, I'm going to put it in. Okay, even though I have these locked out and powered off, I still treat them like they're hot. Always be careful. Assume that they're hot and treat them like that so that way, just in case, you don't get a surprise. those untaped so I can check voltage. 
switches off. I'm gonna go downstairs, turn power on, and we'll come up and test operation. Let's hope this thing doesn't blow up in my face. Um, nothing's in the wheel. Uh, but see, there's a paper. So I stick my hand in there, make sure there's nothing there. We're gonna turn it on and we gotta check rotation. And there's an arrow. And it's rotating the correct direction. Watch your eyeballs. It blows crap when it turns on. This one has one of those stupid Rhea stats. And I can't take it off because it's a main fan and they have to be able to balance it. But I hate those Rhea stats. In my opinion, they ruin the motors. All right, well, we gotta do the hinge kit now. It's running. We'll test current here in a little while. I ended up having to redo everything because I put a hinge kit on here and the conduit where I had to put the hinge kit on the other side. So, so we've got a hinge kit. So now this exhaust fan can hinge all the way up one hand, nice and good. So we're good on that, but uh, we're going to do the startup now. So this guy, I was uh, just getting down in here on the motor name plate down there. It says uh, nine amps is what we're allowed to run. So we're gonna start this guy up and uh, test the current. First and foremost, we gotta check voltage. 121.7 volts, so we're good on that. And then now we're gonna fire it up and see what happens. The initial inrush. Gosh, this thing takes a long time to get up. 11 amps, so we're over amping. We're gonna give it some time, let it run for a minute, and then we'll probably slow it down. Oh. It was actually already slowed down. That's why it was running high amps. That makes more sense. So I sped it up. All right, that's at max speed, 8.43, 8.4. So we're good as far as our current draw goes. I'm gonna leave it at max speed and we're gonna let the balance guys uh, adjust the speed accordingly. All right, we are finished up. I just have one last thing to do is uh, just seal up those holes with some silicone from the old hinge kit. Just so we don't get water down in the thing. But yeah, everything's good. Fans running, customers happy. All right, hopefully that video didn't turn out to be a disaster. I kind of wanted to show the whole crane hand signals thing. Eh, I don't know if I quite like the way that it turned out, but I think you guys get the gist of it. So we had an exhaust fan that the motor and the internals of the fan basically came apart. The motor had come unbolted. It was starting to damage the shaft of the motor. Uh, looking at the fan, it was a relatively inexpensive fan. I went ahead and gave the customer a quote to replace the motor, and they decided to go ahead and replace the fan. Now, this particular customer actually replaces their own fans. They buy their own equipment, so they just ship me the fan, and I put on a hinge kit, uh, fixed the electric, you know, did the electrical, and started it up. So you guys saw that in the beginning of the video, I had it all set up, but then I realized again, I didn't just walk away from the fan once I had it all wired up. I put the hinge kit on and then I hinged it and realized that the electrical whip that I had made was not long enough, so I had to redo everything, okay? It's very important that you're testing every feature of this fan. When you put hinges on them, you open, close them, open, close them. You know, you turn the light, you know, the power switch on and off, on and off. You know, you just test every single feature. You do a proper startup and commissioning on it, okay? Um, now. I did find, um, I did mention in the video that this one has what I call those stupid little rheostats, the speed controllers, but it's not anything. It just basically reduces the voltage. It's, I'm not a fan of these little rheostat speed controllers. Um, you will often see them on 115 volt motors. Uh, this, believe it or not, is a three quarter horsepower, 115 volt exhaust fan, which seems so silly to me. What a waste of electricity. But um, they would have been much better off going three phase on the roof. This is, I think, one of the only restaurants I have that has a single phase 115 volt main exhaust fan. I see those on like little restroom exhaust fans all the time, but whatever. Blew my mind. But anyways, I was, you know, I went through everything, but I pointed out the fact that that little rheostat, I hate those things because in my opinion, they ruin motors. And what happens is that people go and slow them down and don't test current. And then it just, you know, ends up burning up the motor. 
Um, if at all possible, I like to cut them out. But being that this one is on a mainline exhaust fan, the, the balance company has to come out and adjust the air balance on it, and they need to make sure that they have it set up correctly. So I had to leave it on for now at least. Um, that's pretty much it, guys. I really appreciate you guys taking the time to watch this video. Leave me some feedback. I'm sure I'm going to get a lot of feedback on this one because of the crane hand signals and stuff. But let me know. Let me know what you think. I'm always looking for criticism, feedback, anything, okay? I really appreciate it. Uh, remember, I do uh, live streams Monday evening, 5 p.m. Pacific time. Work permitting, of course, but with the whole um, you know, health thing we got going on across the world right now, you know, works pretty slow. So hopefully I should be there on Monday. All right. Really appreciate it. And we will uh, catch you guys on the next one. Okay.